Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English Learn to Speak English Like a Native father of the effortless English system that trains you. You speak English fluently. You speak English confidently. You speak powerfully. You speak effortlessly when you join, when you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there, join, commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Of course, you get that bonus of the movie lessons as well those movie club lessons for vip members only today we're going to talk about community community a learning community because we really have a great quite a special international compu family community we call it we call it the effortless english family that's our nickname and this is just the family of effortless english members members people who are members of vip or members of another course and also just fans, fans who enjoy the show, enjoy the podcast, enjoy my book, whatever. And we have a code for our Everest English family. You know, we do the best we can. We do the right thing. We show each other we care. Just three parts to our code, but those are our basic uh, rules or guidelines for our community. And because of this, we have a very special group, very, very positive, very encouraging which you don't find online a lot. A lot of times online, it's a bunch of uh, people saying bad stuff to each other, insulting each other, all kinds of nonsense. But we are different. Now, on our community, like where do you meet? Of course, you'll see each other, see a lot of the same names in the comments, etc. But the best place to meet other Effortless English members, the best place to meet other Effortless English members is on my gab now. That's really our main community area. Um, I closed the forums because people just weren't using our forums. Uh, I Facebook is a disaster. They don't show my posts to most people. Twitter's doing the same thing now. So we don't need all these Silicon Valley companies. Gab is really the best place. This is where our community is now. Gab.com. Follow me at AJ Hogue. At AJ Hogue. Now we do have a Gab group, but it's not open yet. Because uh, we had a Gab group. Gab changed their system. Right now, the groups are not working, but they're coming back. Very soon, the groups are coming back. So you can join the Gab group, Effortless English group on Gab. That's the best thing to do. But also follow me. Just follow me directly. And then by following me, you can see other people who are following me. If you send me a message on Gab, I'll repost it. I'll resend it to everyone following me. So then you can all follow each other. Okay, that's the best way to do it. Everybody follow each other on my Gab. And then you meet lots of other people from many different countries. You know, people are making Skype groups. They're organizing Skype groups on Gab to chat with each other, practice English. And finally, one more thing I want to talk about, what I want you to do, is that as we're doing our challenge, we're doing our challenge, our Effortless English Listening Challenge and Reading Challenge, begins August 1st, two weeks. Beginning in two weeks, on August 1st, our Reading Challenge and our Listening Challenge. So every day we're going to add, you know, we're going to count our number of minutes of reading in English and the number of hours of active, focused listening. And we'll use this to inspire each other, and hopefully we'll all do more hours than normal. But the link is on my Gab. If you want to join that, it's free for everybody. But just go to my Gab. You'll see at the top of my Gab profile, you will see the link to this challenge if you want to join also. You don't have to join, but you can if you want. Now, another thing I would like to encourage you to do in our community on my Gab, gab.com slash AJ Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E. Let's share. There was a great suggestion. Uh, was it yesterday or two days ago on Gab? 
that let's all share what we are reading, right? Let's share what we're reading. Let's share what we're listening to. So share the material, share the content that you find, especially during the challenge. Because during the challenge, it's three months, three months of reading and listening as much as we can. So we need a lot of stuff. Okay, You're going to need a lot of material, right? You're going to need a lot of audios. Now, of course, I have, I can't remember how many, 300 or more podcasts. You can go back and listen to all my old ones. That's, that's a lot. Uh, if you have my lessons, if you're a VIP member, of course, you're going to repeat those lessons every day or Power English or pronunciation course. All that counts as listening. What else can you listen to? Audiobooks. You can listen to audiobooks. So if you find a good audiobook, especially if you find a good audiobook that's not so difficult, it's not too advanced, you think it would be useful for other people, other members, other Effortless English family members, then you should put it on Gab. You know, post it to Gab. Send it to me on Gab. Put my name in your post at AJ Hoke. And then I'll send it out to everybody else. When our group comes back, you can just put it in the group. That's easier. So post it to the group. And then this is really nice because then we can all maybe learn about other cool books and audiobooks and things. Ah, Samit, thanks again for the super chat. It's very nice of you. He says, dear sir, it's good if I could use future sentences. I'll talk about that. So let's share it. Like if you find a good audiobook or you find if you're doing, you're focused on reading, you find a good book in English, you think, oh, this is good for like intermediate level. It's not too difficult. I'll share it with uh, everybody. Um, yesterday, someone shared a nice website that has a lot of audiobooks in English and it's uh, not too expensive. I think it's $9 a month. That's also nice. So things like that, as you find places that have audios that you are enjoying in English, books, magazines, um, podcasts, anything like that, please share it on my Gab and please share it in our Gab group when that comes back because then we can all help each other and we can discover, we can all find a lot more interesting materials that are useful for everyone. And we can, again, we can inspire because we all need, you really all need a lot of material. You're going to need a lot of things to listen to. You're going to need a lot of things to read. And of course, you can start with my podcast and my show and all my old ones and the lessons, but you're probably going to need even more if you're doing a lot of hours. So let's share. Let's, uh, you know, this is, like I said, this is not a competition really and it, meaning like there's you know there's nothing to win really it's a it's more about like inspiration like i said it's it's it, yesterday it's like a fun run when i used to do a lot of running i would enjoy entering races right <clears throat> i did a few marathons and i did a huge number of 5k's and 10k's and i always loved doing them again like there was a little competition maybe, but I was never going to win. I was, I'm not a professional runner. I never was. So I was never going to win, not even win my age group. I was not that serious about it, but I still enjoyed those fun runs. I enjoyed the races because I always ran faster during the races. I pushed myself more because of all the excitement of everybody else also running the races. In fact, I, Let's talk a little more about that because I think that the best goal to have for this challenge, these challenges, it's very similar to people who are runners or people who do triathlons, things like that. So there's something called a PR, PR. Runners, um, a lot of runners will write down, they'll record their PR and they try to improve their PR. What does PR mean? It means personal record, personal record. So it's your personal record. You're competing against yourself. You're competing against your past performance, right? So if I go into a race, let's say a 5K race, it's about three miles. And I do a race and I maybe I did it 24 minutes. So I did a 5K, 24 minutes. And that now that's my PR. It's my personal record. I've done one. Well, that's the fastest because I've only done one. So now what am I going to do next? In my next race, I want to beat that number. 
right? Now in running, of course, you're trying to do less time. So I want to go faster than 24 minutes. If I do it, my next race, I do 23 minutes, then I'm very happy. I beat my PR. I have a new PR, a new personal record. So yes, you know, there are lots of other runners and they're inspiring me, you know, to go faster, but I'm not trying to beat everybody. I, to win a race like that, you have to be, you know, almost a professional. You have to have a, you got to be training super seriously. You know, the most serious runners are very, very, very fast. I was never going to do that. But I and you and any of us, we can all beat our personal record. So what can you do for listening? What's your personal record? What's the most minutes, the most hours you have ever listened to English in one day? What's your record? You know, is it three hours of focused listening, not distracted listening, focused listening? What's the most time you've ever listened to English, focused, concentrating in one day? What is it? That's your PR. That's your personal record. It doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. Maybe it's 30 minutes. Maybe it's five hours. Maybe it's 10 hours. Maybe it's 12 hours. It doesn't matter. But write it down. Because then during the challenge, your goal is to beat that number. Your goal is to do more, right? So if your personal record is five hours in one day, well, try to do six hours in a day. You, if you do six hours, you beat your PR. You get a new personal record with your English listening. And then try to do it every day during the challenge. That's even better. And then when you get six hours, maybe a few weeks later, you say, okay, I'm going to try to beat six hours now. i got to make a new personal record, a new PR. So you try to go for seven hours or go for six and a half hours, right? And so during the whole challenge, you know, maybe each week or each month, every couple of weeks, try to beat your PR. Try to push longer and longer and longer during the challenge so that at the end, you have a big new personal record for the number of minutes per day. And also during the challenge, it's three months long. So you can count your time each month. So in the first month, maybe you do 60 hours. So the second month, try to do more than that. Try to beat that. Try to do 65 hours or 70 hours in month number two. And then month number three, try to beat that number. Maybe you do 80 hours. Maybe you do 100 hours in the last month, the third month, right? So this is how you're going to do it. This is the mindset to have. In this way, all of us can win, right? Only one person will have the most hours. It's almost certainly not going to be me, and maybe it's not going to be you. That doesn't matter, but what we can do is we can make personal records, and we can beat those personal records. So at the end, we're doing many more hours of listening per day or minutes per day, much more than when we started. That's my goal, right? So I don't know, my goal... My maximum is probably six hours right now for Japanese in one day. So I want to do more. My goal will be to increase that. Try to do seven hours in a day. Try to do eight hours in a day. And then make it consistent also. So it's not just one day, but most days I'm doing that amount. And hopefully by the end of the challenge, I'm doing, you know, maybe eight hours a day or something like that. You know, so you can do the same thing. It doesn't matter. Just wherever you're starting now, the idea is that during the whole challenge, you're going to increase, 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 better personal record, better personal record, doing more, doing more, doing more. And that's how you know if you're winning, if you're improving, if the challenge is working for you. Okay, so that's the idea. We're not going to, it doesn't matter who actually wins at the end. All right, let's go to our questions and comments now live on YouTube. Good to see everybody. Like, like Firdas Bufendra says, you do competition with yourself, not others. Yes, because this is an individual thing, right? This is not a competition. There are, you know, there are some sports where it's really a competition. You, it's you against somebody else. You have to beat the other person. Like boxing, okay? You, you can't do boxing alone. Okay, boxing is you against someone else. But other sports, like things like running, especially non-professional running, you're really competing against time, right? You're competing against the clock. You're trying to do the same distance in a shorter amount of time, less and less and less time. You're competing against yourself. Golf is this way. Yes, professional golf, they have tournaments. But the truth is, like even in golf, 
you can't do anything to the other players, right? You can't you can't stop the other players. You can't block their shots, right? I mean, really, each golfer is playing individually alone. Who whoever has the best score wins. But really, golf is an individual sport. Well, learning English, learning a language, it's individual, right? You're not really competing against anyone else. You're competing against yourself. Fernanda summarizes, restates our code. We do the best we can. We do the right thing. We show people we care. That's right. Where can I contact with the challenge? Get on my Gab. I have the link is on my Gab account. So you got to follow me on Gab. Namaz says, I think this three-month challenge is a huge journey for us, effortless English community. More important thing, it's not exactly you should win, but instead we should go till the end of it together. Yeah, see, the idea is that we're all going to make personal records. All of us are going to do it, and all of us are going to make a big improvement together. So at the end of the three months, we can all celebrate because all of us, increased our listening, increased our reading times, and therefore increased our and improved our language ability, our English language, for me, Japanese. Uh, so that's exactly what it is. That's right. Very positive. And at the end, we can all feel great. Like Nasser says, the challenge is very motivational. If we uh, understand well, it's all about enjoyment and honor. Either way, we're going to improve. It's not about greed. Yeah. Well, we're not. Yeah, this is it's really individual. It's just it's, it's something it's like golf. It's like many other things. It's really an individual thing. And we're all doing it together. Cleepy says, if we watch movies with subtitles, do we count that as reading or listening? I think you can count that as both. You, you can do that as both. If you're reading, if you are reading the subtitles in English and listening, you could count that as both also. Just like audiobook and reading a book at the same time, you can count as both. Ah, yeah. Fook says, uh, I usually read books, but I decided to buy a Kindle for this reading challenge. Excellent. Yeah, the ebooks are actually for language learning purposes. The ebooks are better. I mean, I for you know, just for the joy of reading, I like regular books better. But when you're just trying to read a lot and you want to be able to, you know, use it, the dictionary very quickly, the ebooks are definitely more convenient. Oh, Mikhail asks, Mikhail asks, uh, I was wondering if you could tell me one thing. I missed our movie club and I'm a VIP member. Should I wait for the whole recording on our site? Yes. It's just, a, just um, you'll get everything, Mikhail, all the VIP members. You'll get all the recordings. It's just uh, probably, probably more like it, probably a month from now. It might be when we finish the whole movie, then I'll just put all of the recordings onto the VIP site. I'm also going to get a transcript, so there'll be text You'll be able to read along also for the movie club lesson. So that's another benefit for VIP members. You'll get the text transcripts of those movie club lessons also. But uh, I just need it. My programmers are busy. My web design people, they're busy getting the business course finished. Uh, it's when, they're, when they're finished, the next project for them is to add the movie lessons and get that ready for VIP members. So it's just going to take a few weeks. But yes, you'll get it. Don't worry. English success. Why do you prohibit comments on your YouTube videos? I ah, just tired of moderating them. It's the this, the comment system on YouTube sucks. It's too hard to deal with all the spam and everything. It just waste. It was wasting too much of my time. There's too many social media. You know. I, 
I like to simplify, okay? And I there's just too many. I don't want Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, blah, 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 right? I'm going to just focus on one, Gab. I like Gab now. Gab, because they just changed. You know, Gab, before I was kind of so-so with Gab, kind of liked it, but they're changed now, now that they are open source and distributed. That's a huge thing. That's a big, big, very positive change. Because of that, I am now going to focus on Gab. So that's where I'm going to be. You want the comment to me directly, do it on Gab. You want to ask me a question on social media, do it on Gab. You want to give me a suggestion, do it on Gab. Because I don't read the comments on Facebook usually. Uh, I, I don't even, I, I read the live YouTube and the live Facebook comments, but I don't, after that, you know, YouTube, my videos don't even have comments anymore. And Facebook, I just don't read them. Okay. And Twitter, I'm also not very active now. It's just too much. You know, you don't want to waste your life. And then Instagram, right? So, I mean, I put stuff on Instagram, but again, I don't really answer those comments. It's too much. I don't want to waste my time looking at a, looking at a phone all day. So, I'm, you know, simplify, simplify, simplify. I recommend this for all of you. Choose one. Okay. If, you know, if, if we're going to use it for, I only care about for effortless English. In my personal life, I don't use social media anymore. You know, if I want to talk to my friends or family, I do it directly. I call them on the phone or maybe I send them an email, but I don't do it on social media. So social media is for our Effortless English community, and I'm not going to do five different ones. It's too much. So Gab it is. Gab's the one. Everything else, uh, I might post things, but I'm not going to look at the comments. Emmanuel Esposito says, do you recommend learning phrasal verbs? Because my cousin learns a handful of phrasal verbs trying to memorize. What do you think? It's a practical way to recall for future use. No, it's a terrible way. You're going to have, look, just the, the phrasal verbs, just, it's just a phrase. Okay. Just treat it like any phrase. Okay. Um, it's just a two word phrase, usually two words. So just treat it like a word and just learn them as you find them, okay? Learn them as you find them in something you're reading or something you're listening to. Okay, you hear a phrasal verb. It just means it's a verb that has more than one word. And just learn it. Just pretend it's an individual word. That's all. Just pretend it's an individual word. You know, I have to do this even in Japanese. It's not necessarily a, exactly a phrasal verb, but there are just certain phrases I'm, I'm already finding in Japanese that some phrases like the it the changes the meaning if you put two words together it's different when they're together than the individual words right so I have to just imagine these two words are really like one word and I have to learn the meaning of both those words when they are together that's all you're doing with phrasal verbs don't try to people try to memorize lists and lists of phrasal verbs no you're just going to forget it uh, it has no meaning there's no context so, no, I don't think it's a good method. Okay, Ferrat Turin saying, um, we separated the parts of the challenge into reading and listening. Should I do heavy lifts? Because intensity is a key point for our focus, in my opinion. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I mean, I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to focus on listening. I'll do reading. But, you know, I've already kind of organized, I've figured out my day, like how many hours per day I'm my target. I want to do listening and reading, and it's definitely mostly listening for me. Uh, so, and I think you do have a point. There is sort of an advantage to focusing on more on one of them and getting maximum intensity from one. Yes, I think you may be right about that. Um, but they both do support each other. You know, the, by reading, especially if you're reading transcripts of your audios, it helps you to understand the audios better. So it makes your listening a more effective. Um, and the opposite is true too. You're reading, but if you listen to an audio of that, it helps you understand the pronunciation and improve that processing in your brain. So it's just up to you. There's no not a right answer. There's not a wrong answer. If you want to focus on one more, that's fine. I'm doing that. If you want to balance them and kind of do half and half, also fine. It's really just your choice and what you feel like you want to do now. Again, you know, this is, remember, this is about your personal best. It's about your improvement. 
It's about you being the boss. You're the boss of your own learning. So does it, don't worry about what other people are doing. Yeah, like Dulang Kayo says, the challenge will be between you and yourself. Keep fighting so that you can beat your own record. We have to focus on the individual success. Yes, exactly right. So we're thinking again like individual sports, like runners, like triathletes, right? Where, you know, most people who are not high professionals, most, uh, most people who do running or triathlons or bike, you know, cycling, most of them, are focused on beating their own record, right? Getting faster or going longer. Some people focus more on distance. It's kind of what we're doing in this challenge, right? So some runners like, okay, I did a marathon. Now I want to do 30 miles. Okay, I did a 30 mile race. Now I want to do a double marathon or a triple marathon, right? So it's, a, it's just that thing. You're just, you're just challenging yourself to beat yourself to beat your past performance. Yes, now Aaron, this is a good point. A key point about improving listening ability is listening to things which we can understand. Am I right? Yes, if you don't understand it, if you understand nothing, then you're not improving a lot. You may be helping your pronunciation or something and kind of learning to pick out words. You know, there's some few benefits there, but overall not so much. This is where the text can really help you, where you get some audio and you listen to it and you're, oh, well, I have no idea what, what this is. I can't understand it. So get the text. Then you can read the text very slowly. You know, you can find the word, new words you have. Uh, then you listen to it again. Now you understand it a little better and you can kind of go back and forth in that way. So even if you're focusing on listening, you know, do still do some reading. So like I said, my focus is listening for this challenge. I'll probably do about 75% of my time will be listening, but I'm still going to read because I need to read to understand. I have to read to help me understand the audios or else I can't do new audios. So I'm still going to be reading. It's just, it's probably for me right now, about 75% listening, 25% reading. Now, as you become more advanced, and, or, or just when you want to really focus on vocabulary, for example, then you might change that. You might go 75% reading, 25% listening. You might flip it. And at other times, you might go half and half. So again, you can play around with it. The other thing you can do with these two is nice. is just for your motivation, your brain. Sometimes your brain, you just get tired of doing the same thing. So maybe you're listening, 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 listening a lot. It's great. But then at some point, you're like, ah, you, you just start getting kind of tired. You start, you're starting to get bored. You're starting to get very tired with listening. So sometimes don't quit English. Just change your activity. So you instead you take a break from listening mostly and you, you change, you shift. And then you just say, okay, I'm going to just focus on reading for a while. Kind of let my brain rest from listening. And I'm going to mostly do reading now for a while. And so it kind of gives your brain something new to do. So the motivation goes back up. Reading overall is, I'd say, generally less stressful because you can do it slowly. So you kind of, you're getting a rest, but you're still getting English. And then when you're, maybe you start to get a little bored with that after a while, and then you jump back to listening again. That's also fine. This is the great thing about independent learning when you are the boss of your own learning that you can make these changes anytime you want. You don't have to follow some teacher telling you exactly what to do every day. You can adjust as you need to. Yeah, well, Jamala, ja, I'm sorry, Jamila, is there a form to exchange ideas and speak English? My Gab account, that's where you want to go. Now, we have a group on Gab. It's coming back, okay? Everyone keeps asking, where's the Gab group? It's, it'll be back in probably a week, okay? So, But for now, just follow me on Gab. When the group opens again, I'll put, my, put the group link on Gab, and that's our forum now. Well, this is a great idea, Ayub. Ayub says, uh, 
What about traveling to Anglophone countries to practice English? Yes, that's probably the... You know what? Here's an idea. I was just thinking of this. I like it. Oh, yeah. I hope. Very nice. I was just thinking like uh, to talk about this, a suggestion that at the end of the challenge, if you have the time and you have the money, you could celebrate by traveling to an English speaking country or really even traveling to any country where you can speak English. Uh, like a lot of European countries, you can speak English uh, even if they're not native speakers. A lot of people still speak English. So you could uh, like kind of celebrate like you do three months really making big improvements, a huge amount of listening and reading. And then to celebrate, you know, no in November, take a trip to England, take a trip to America, take a trip to uh, Australia, wherever. Right. That would be fun. Canada. So if you, you know, if you have the time and the money, if you don't, no problem. But uh, it would be fun. I agree. It would be kind of cool. I'm lucky I live in Japan, so I get Japanese all the time. Morad says, how can I find you in Gab? It's right up here on the screen. If you're watching, it's the top right here. See my finger? Gab.com. And then there's the line. And then there's my name, A-J-H-O-G-E. That's my profile on Gab. Follow me there. That's it's easy. Yeah, Fernand Fernanda is also recommend Kindle is the best indeed. That's what I use. I use Kindle. That's my e-reader, electronic reader. There's also one called ePub. There's a website called Kobo.com. I think it might be Japanese. Rakuten maybe owns them. There are a few. You can get. You know, you can use a phone, you can use a tablet, you can use a computer, doesn't matter. Oh, okay, Ra Ra Robert says, move the headlines from the bottom of the screen to the top so we can read subtitles when you return. Oh, okay. Not a bad idea. How about that? Hey, hey, here's a cyclist right here. Merrick, I just got back from a 60-kilometer bike ride. I feel fantastic. Nice. Although tired as every day because I drive every day. In a few days, I plan a 100-kilometer ride and then maybe more. See? Now, it's kind of the same idea, right? You can do it with time it's where you're focused on speed. Or you can do it on distance where you're pushing. Like, for example, when I was training for a marathon, uh, my focus was less on time, not so much, um, but more on distance. And so my goal every week, I did one long run, right? It was usually Sunday. So Sunday was my long run day. And my goal and what I did was every Sunday, I increased the distance. So maybe I did, let's say I started three miles. So Sunday, number one, I did three miles. The next Sunday, I ran four miles. The next Sunday, I ran five miles. The next Sunday, I did six miles. Boom, 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 boop, yep. That's, and that's a very easy way to train for a marathon. You just keep going until you reach the marathon distance on that day. Then you're ready for the race. And, you know, cyclists, cycling and swimming are both also endurance sports. And uh, you'll find, I don't, I've, I've never been like, a serious cyclist, but I imagine the similar approach would work. And I'm guessing for swimming too. So cool, Merrick. That's great. Very nice. Now, see, this is cool. In says, I'm doing volunteer work in an international hostel. See, that's something else you could do. You could do these kinds of things uh, to celebrate at the end or even to do now. You can... Anything that's like around tourism or travel, international visitors to your town is an opportunity to speak English because we know most places English is the language of tourism and travel, right? Because when you have people from many places meeting and one, you know, to travel or do something, they need a common language and 
it's usually English. So this is a great opportunity in your own place, in your own town, to find opportunities to talk to people and practice and enjoy. Good idea. Miguel Borges says how to be a VIP member uh, right at the top here, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Deepak says, big thanks to you, my super red-pilled guru. With It's guru day today in India, I believe, or was yesterday. With us, you are also improving a lot. Started doing book club, then podcast almost every day, then videos, now the great interviews. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Exactly right. I have been. You guys have inspired me, and I'm trying to improve the show constantly. We'll be doing another interview soon. I, uh, um, I guess that Cole Robinson's not coming. I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, sad about that because he's the one I really wanted to interview next about fasting, but he didn't. He never responded, so I just need to send invite someone else. Elena says, "I love to use our code in my life in general. It's worth it. I became a better person. It is. It's the code of my own family too. I'll be teaching my kids that same code." Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Sophia. Greetings, coach. Can I improve my speaking skills without talking to a native speaker? Yes. When it comes to talk English, I feel shy and my ideas vanish. It's totally normal, okay? Um, I was, yeah, it's totally fine. You can do shadowing. That helps. You can talk to non-native speakers. You don't have to talk to a native speaker. Anybody who speaks English, you can talk to them in English. So even if they're from your own country, even if they're another English learner, you know, and many people speak very well, even if it's not their native language. So you, anytime you're having a conversation communicating in English, it's going to help you with your speaking and overcoming some of that shyness you've got, you talk about. Anita says, I just finished your book. Great. <laughs> Maristella says, I tried Gab, but I was lost there yesterday. Yeah, just follow me and send me a message. So just put at, you know, the little A with the circle, at A-J-H-O-G-E, at A-J Hogue, and then write something. And then I'll see it. Just like Twitter. It's the same as Twitter. Lisa says, the Efforts English family is really special. I'm very happy with the challenge. I'm sure we'll motivate each other, get lots of new ideas. Great idea, AJ. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm part of it. So I'm excited too because it's going to help me also be motivated, you know, try to work on my personal best as well. Oh, Yosra says, are we free to choose what we will read or is it unified reading? No, you choose. It's up to you. Anything you want in English, in English. It's your choice, your choice. Totally open, anything you want. You're going to need to read a lot of things probably. So it's not just one thing. Yeah, like, Fuchtin says, I believe our English skill will improve a lot after this three-month challenge. Like focus time, increase the amount of time we can overcome the plateau period. So great. Thank you, teacher. Yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Everyone has a club. I'm going to have a club for every day. Would you add a club for health sports? Really, it's useful. Thanks again. Yeah, maybe that's something I'm quite interested in is health and fitness, as you know.
Mohammed Sadiq says, I'm in Kurdistan, region of Iraq. I'm a student uh, in an English department. I have a teachers who always say to focus on grammar, to learn English. What do you recommend? Yeah, don't listen to them. What you need is do, do this challenge. Do the maximum amount of reading and listening as you can every day for three months and see what happens. I think you'll see a nice improvement. Yeah, like Ahmad says, Ahmad Shawari says, I completely relinquished all my social media accounts. I kept just my WhatsApp. That gives me huge freedom and less distraction. Exactly. Do we really need five different social media? The truth is one is more than enough. If you if you have, you know, a community, like for using English, for example, English learning, like Effortless English, if you have some other purpose for social media, just use one. You don't need a bunch of them. One's enough. And uh, if you don't have a purpose, you don't really, you don't need any. Zero is fine. Zero is totally fine. Uh, you know, I do it just for this, just for effortless English. In my personal life, I don't use social media anymore. No, no reason. I quickly realized that social media friends were fake friends. They were not real. You know, I, I realized kind of a rule in my own personal life. If someone does not contact me directly, if I don't talk to them on the phone directly or email directly, if there's not, or text message, right? If we're not one-to-one -one direct communication, they're not a real friend. They're not really a friend or, fam you know, or close family, right? Because my real friends, you know, I'm talking personal life, right? I'm not, not effortless English, but in my personal life, that's kind of a very easy thing, measurement. I realized there were some people who I, maybe I knew in the past who were, you know, I called them friends and I realized these aren't friends. They're not friends. They don't care about me. We don't talk to each other on the phone. We, ne we never have any direct communication. It's just posting a bunch of junk on Facebook. So, good, Ahmad. Very nice. How are the twins? They're doing very well, actually. Very well. They keep us busy. <laughs> oh, this is kind of an idea. I've got a question. Uh, this is Emmanuel again. How to deal with obtuse words. That's a nice word right there. Obtuse is kind of like hard to understand. Uh, that we don't understand because a friend of mine uses a good app called Hin Hin Native. Anytime he knows nothing, he asks a native speaker. That's like that's kind of a nice idea, actually. You can just ask a native speaker, "What does this mean?" Because you might get, you often will get a maybe a better explanation from a native speaker. And now, see, I like I did this with my wife the other day with Japanese. There was some word with the verbs and i was like what is this exactly and she gave me a really quick explanation very simple and yeah that is actually kind of nice i'll check that out sounds cool what do you think about learning specific english thoroughly like ifrs what is ifrs i don't know what ifrs is I guess you're talking about like technical, like uh, like computer English, science English, you know, maybe biology English. Um, if if you need that, then or you want it, then yeah, sure, go ahead. Just uh, you did, you mostly do that by reading, I think, reading about those topics. Okay, let me just jump to the bottom. I, I it's hard to keep up with you guys. Oh, Elbron says, my father watches you a lot and loves your content. Well, hi to your dad and welcome to you too. Marco says, is it better to listen and read subtitles in English? Both things at the same time during the movie or listening is better. Just listening. Well, I, you can do both. 
um, depends on your level and how much you understand. If you understand it all, you don't need their subtitles. Turn them off. If you're having a lot of trouble understanding, then you might use the subtitles the first time and then watch it again without the subtitles. So you can play around with it. Ah, Namaz asking, already thinking about the next movie. What will be our next movie for Movie Club? Maybe Lord of the Rings. For sure, Lord of the Rings is on my list. All th now, there's three movies, and they're very long. So uh, we would have to break those up over a period of time. But Fellowship of the Ring is a good possibility. The Fellowship of the Ring, the first one. What else? We've got a few other... There's, there's some good movies. Star Wars, the original Star Wars. There's a little bit of... Uh, Mm, like science fiction words but but the on the other hand star wars is again one of those movies like the matrix where we get a lot of slang uh so a lot of those words like jedi have become part of english and are used in general english in some ways as kind of slang so star wars is some of these really influential movies you know other cool movie i thought you know it's violent it's, it's definitely not for kids but the godfather the original Godfather movie is excellent. Really classic, classic movie with some wonderful dialogue and really great scenes and, and uh, some kind of famous uh, lines from the, the, the Godfather. Now, again, it's about gangsters, so there's a lot of killing and stuff, but, uh, but it's a cool movie. So The Godfather, Star Wars, Fellowship of the Ring, these are all good. We'll make a list. I, I, I'll write down a list. I got a big list of books, so we'll just need to make a movie list too. And we can also go back farther. You know, we can do some really classic movies too, like some older movies from the 50s and 60s or even like the 40s uh, because the accent, the English st style of speaking is still very good. You know, for example, um, there's a nice Christmas movie. Um, oh, I just forgot the name. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Jimmy Stewart. That was made in the, I want to say 40s, maybe. It's a one. It's a great movie. Really nice movie with a wonderful message. Um, that that would be a great. That's on my list too. I just added it. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a classic movie. Everybody in America knows that movie because it's just uh, it, every Christmas people watch it. So there's all kinds of movies. You know, we can go on and on. There's so many nice movies we can get. Chariots of Fire is a good one we just saw, I just saw recently. Yeah, like Bufendra says, lots of teachers recommend focusing on grammar. Their trick isn't working. But AJ recommends don't focus on grammar. AJ's trick is working. That's right. That's right. Now, some people, will, you know, they don't, they misunderstand. They think I say, oh, don't learn grammar. No, you'll learn grammar, but you'll learn it in a natural way, an intuitive way. Uh, you can occasionally check something like you're like, well, what, what is this? And you just check it really quickly. Uh, okay. But you, you, you want to focus your time on listening and reading, listening and reading, huge amounts of listening and reading. What about the accent in The Godfather? Is it an American accent? All the younger characters, yes. I'm trying to think of Don Corleone. I think it's still, it's kind of, it's not a, it's a little bit of a strange accent, but it's not an Italian accent. I think it's still American. It's Marlon Brando plays the Godfather in that movie. And he kind of talks like this. He's got this voice that uh, he does. But, it, but it's not, you know, from my memory, I have to watch it again, but... I don't remember it being a strange accent. Like, it's not an Italian accent. I think it's still American. It's a little bit of a strange voice he uses in that. But he's. But then he has, you know, the other characters in that movie, they're all his children, and they, they're all totally American. So I think, I think The Godfather would be fine. Uh, Bakir says, the language is changing in older movies. It will not help. No, 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 no. Uh, you can go all the way back to like the 1940s and the language is still totally fine. So, for example, the, the, the It's a Wonderful Life, it's the same English we use now. Now, they're not using slang. They're not saying blue pill, red pill, and 
modern slang, but but they're using standard English that is still totally common now. So that's that would be fine. Huster says, sometimes we read books that are a little difficult to understand. Is it useful reading? Because the purpose is to train ourselves to read vocabulary. What do you think? Yeah, it can still be useful. Yes. You know, you use an e-reader. Use that dictionary very fast. Keep going. Keep reading. You, you might have to skip some words. You might have to guess. Keep going. It will help. Yes, it's okay. You can do a mix. Some very easy, some more difficult. So John asking again, but John, I have no idea what IFRS is. What does that mean? Okay, so this is interesting. Let me see if I understand this. Abdel Rahman says, can I learn another language like Spanish by listening to an English speaker, speaker teach Spanish? Oh, like a non-native teacher. The subject is complex. I'd love to learn two languages with each other. I mean, yes, but better to listen to a native speaker, I think. I mean, if you want to learn Spanish, go to unlimitedspanish.com. That's my friend Oscar Peyus. He is Spanish. You might say he's, Catal he's Catalan, but he's Spanish. <laughs> and... Uh, he has created some great lessons. They use mini stories. So using the same method, I used his lessons and uh, they helped me travel around Spain for two months and do some really basic uh, communicating and get hotels and talk to people a little bit. Uh, so they it was very useful for beginners and he's a very good teacher. So unlimitedspanish.com. So don't learn why learn from a non-native speaker you can learn from someone who's a native speaker he's a native speaker he's spanish ah abraham finally in ifrs international financial reporting standards right so like accounting yeah right yes you can so you just have to these kind of very job specific or topic specific uh, vocab it's called jargon we call it jargon it's basically special vocab used by a certain group, like accountants have their jargon. And non-accountants don't understand a lot of it. Like even I, like if, if I talk to an accountant about like some really detailed, advanced accounting, I won't understand some of their words. I don't, I won't, I don't, won't understand what they're talking about, right? Because they're using this specific vocab. So how do you learn that? Well, you've just got to... Uh, mostly from reading, you know, you read magazines, you read books about those topics, and you'll get, you'll get, you'll eventually learn that special vocab. And sometimes you can, you can find audios, you can find podcasts or courses or videos about those topics, and again, learn that vocab. You know, lots of things have this. Even sports have this, right? So, like some of you guys might probably don't know vocabulary from American football because you don't have American football in your country. So you're like, you know, when we use the word like safety, what's safety mean for American football? It actually has two meanings. It's a position and it's a way that you score points. But, you know, I know it because I played American football as a kid and I watched it. And so I, I, I know all the different uh, vocab for that sport, but you might not, right? Or, or the opposite, like cricket. I don't know any cricket vocab. I have no idea. If you start talking to me about cricket and using those vocabulary words, I'll be totally confused because I don't understand the game. <laughs> so it's sports. Uh, there are just lots of special areas like this. You just have to do a lot of reading and listening in that topic. Oh, uh, what do you think Nutella asks... What do you think about Oxford bookworms? Are they useful? Uh, I'm trying to think. Is I'm guessing you mean those are the graded readers, like they're the simple versions of stories. Yes, those are fine. Those are good. They're good. Oh, Dr. Jeffrey Life. I know who he is. Vladislav says, can we do an interview with Dr. Jeffrey Life about whom you had a conversation in The Powerful Aging? Oh, well, yeah, that's so you do know. 
Yeah, good idea. I'll add him to my list and see if I can contact him. He's all about aging in a powerful way. Good idea. He would be a good one. Oh, Maristella says, please repeat the Spanish site. It's unlimited Spanish. Tell you what, I'll put it on the screen. I love to promote Oscar because he's... I really enjoyed his lessons. He's a really good guy, too. UnlimitedSpanish.com And if you want to learn Japanese, I'm just going to... It's like a big advertising today. <laughs> I'll put my wife's Japanese site. LearnRealJapanese.com There you go, guys. You want to learn more than English? We got a Japanese site and a Spanish site on the screen if you're watching. So it's unlimitedspanish.com. That's Oscar. Japanese, if you're now if you want if you're a zero level total beginner in Japanese, you know nothing. Learn real Japanese is a good way to start. That's my wife's site. All right. <laughs> awesome. Ajit says, what's the best American TV show for English learning? I always watch WWE. That's fantastic. WWE is a, that's, wow. You're going to learn a lot of funny vocabulary in that. But I like it. That's really fun, casual, um, kind of a crazy type of English in WWE. But it's really conversational. And you're going to get a lot of like slang and idioms. And um, I mean, that's English, man. That's really good. So WWE is fine. I mean, not the fighting part because, well, even the fighting part, because you have the announcers describing what's happening. So that's actually OK, too. But then like the interviews they do with the wrestlers and they're always like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to kick his ass. And, uh, uh, you know, that's all that's all good stuff. Totally fine. And very entertaining. So why not? Abraham says, why didn't she call it Effortless Japanese? She does. She has a podcast. My wife's podcast is called Effortless Japanese. So she has both. Okay. What if you want to learn Arabic? So I don't know. I uh, no idea. I, link, I would say. L-I-N-G-Q dot com for for arabic uh, because i know steve kaufman right now is learning arabic steve kaufman is the founder of link and he's learning arabic right now so i'm sure he has added arabic content to the site so here's some suggestions about other tv shows friends Seinfeld, Cheers, Alf, Modern Family. Yeah, all these kind of shows are fine. They're all very conversational. Um, some are more funny, like jokes, and others are more conversational. But all this kind of thing is totally fine. What else do people watch? Uh, there was that show about the, the nerds. I don't remember. But anyway. Alan says, Hi, Jam Alan. I'm a Brazilian guy. I love your podcast, your videos. Thanks for helping me a lot. You are welcome, Alan. Thank you. Marco says, I'm going to the Faculty of Philo Philo Philology in October this year. What do you think? What do I need to learn before that? So you have until October, huh? I'm going to be an English teacher. I'm at B2 level right now, I think. All right. So you probably, what, maybe you want to jump up to, what, A1, right? Do the challenge. I, I think the challenge is the best thing you could do before, before you go to school. Uh, it would be perfect. You've got August and September and then even into October. So do maximum listening and or reading with us. And you'll make a nice jump, I think. Uh, 
Andreina, Andrea, and is it Andrea? Yeah. Could your many stories alone eventually help me become fluent in English? If I go over them repeatedly and thoroughly, my favorite mini story is the race. Yes. Yes. That deep learning, that massive repetition is going to help your fluency quite a lot. Yes, indeed. That's why I made them. Siam says, uh, please suggest some business related TV shows. The one I know, may, the main one I know is Shark Tank. That's actually pretty good because uh, you get some discussions, right? So you get somebody, they come and they, they make a presentation about their business idea. And then the really inter interesting part is you have the five successful business people. They like ask questions and then they, usually they destroy the poor person. And they, you know, they're kind of like, ah, this is a bad idea. Or they give their opinion about the business and then they bid, they say, well, Okay, I'll give you some money to be to buy part of your business. It's actually a nice show, and there's a lot of there's a lot of them. There's many seasons of Shark Tank. Okay, guys, I'm gonna, we got two more minutes, and then going to finish. Oh, Marco, another TV show. How I Met Your Mother is a good TV show. Uh huh. These are all like, these are called sitcoms, situation comedies. Do you know Coach Saint Shane, Mike says? Um, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. But I don't know him. Big Bang Theory. Yes, that's the one I was trying to think of. Jaya Davin. Yes, that's the one about the nerds. How many times each day to improve my English? Well, join our challenge. You want to do as many minutes, as many hours per day as possible. That's why we're doing the challenge. All right, I'm going to take these off the screen now. Boom, boom. TED Talk, is it a good way to learn English? Yes, speeches in general are fine. Presentations, speeches, TED Talks are one example. Tony Robbins, you know, anything motivational. Anything like that is totally fine. Gordon Ramsay, yes, also good. He yells at people a lot too. Uh, he listen to him. He's funny. He's a chef, and like he'll have. He has a show where he works with other chefs. It's like a reality type show, and usually he screams at them and tells them they suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway Pollyanna what do you think about the movie Pollyanna I don't think I've seen it Vladislav I haven't seen it so I don't know Clippy, can you recommend some psychological books? I, d I recommend Tony Robbins. Start with Tony Robbins. I think he's got a good, effective approach to psychology. Tony Robbins, he's got, well, there's what? Uh, Awaken the Power, Awaken the Giant Within and Unlimited Power. So I think those are the two names of his books, the psychological books. I would start with those two. AJ, are you talking about, to me, I guess, where do you live? Tell us more about yourself. Oh, you should listen to my podcast. You should listen to the audio podcast because I talk about this all the time. I live in Japan, in Osaka, Japan. So I I, I'm, I often will do what I call them walk and talks, walk and talk. So I have a recorder. I've got this little portable audio recorder, this little thing, and I'll walk around and I talk into it. And I often talk about Osaka, I talk about Japan, I talk about my life here. So, um, yeah, 
listen to the audio podcast. Just get a podcasting app and Effortless English Podcast. Just subscribe. It's free. A movie collection asks, what's the meaning of the word nerd? <laughs> okay, yeah, nerd is like slang. It's kind of someone who's smart, but uh, but not good socially. Nerd or geek. Space, same basic meaning. So someone who's like really into computers, but they're socially, they're not cool, right? They're not confident socially. That's a nerd. Or, or we also say geek. So that show, uh, The Big Bang Theory, is about nerds. Yeah, The Cosby Show, it's also a good one. All right, uh, about time for you to go. I hear babies crying in there. Baja says, is Tony, I have a curious question. Is Tony Robbins your close friend? No, I've never met him one-to-one. -one. I've been to many of his seminars, but I don't know him personally at all. No. Bahid with a nice testimonial. I think one of the best ways to learn English like a native is following your VIP program. Thank you. I agree. Taiyaki says, I'm a nerd, but it's okay. Yeah, I was a nerd. When I was young, I was quite a nerd. Nerds are fine. Nothing bad. Nerds, good to be smart. <laughs> Wilo says, what do you think about phrasal verbs? Yes, use them. <laughs> I just... <laughs> May have come late. I already talked about phrasal verbs. <laughs> um, this I don't recommend. Andrena says for our listening challenge, uh, specifically, I'm talking about what about watching singing contests such as American Idol or The Voice? No, I don't recommend that for English. I know there's sometimes the judges are talking. But then in between, it's just singing, which is not helping your English, really. So, I mean, you know, for like extra stuff if you want to. But I don't count that for listening in our challenge because uh, there's too much time in there with the music where you're not really listening to English. It's, I, I, I don't count songs as really uh, part of English listening. So, but, you know, they do have discussions after with the judges. They have a little talk so it's it's okay you can do it but um yeah are you married with a japanese girl yes my wife is japanese Are all introverts nerds? No, I would say no. No. Some introverts are can function socially okay. I'm, I consider myself an, an introvert, but, you know, I can be social if I have to. <laughs> okay, let's just end with this last question because it's a repeat of something we talked about. And then uh, done for today. What about having a speaking challenge? Any ideas? Yes, we're going to do it after this challenge. So we're going to do listening and reading first for three months. Starts August 1st, finish October 31st. After that, we'll do some kind of speaking challenge, probably involving shadowing, something you can do uh, alone, but I don't know. We'll, I'll think about how we'll do it exactly, but we will do something with speaking also. But we'll do it next. All right, guys, thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you. So remember now with our community, what we're going to do is we're going to share. We're going to share our, our ideas, right, about when you find something good to read. Like today, you guys were sharing 
some TV shows and some movie ideas. Well, it's, that's perfect. That's wonderful. Let's do that on Gab because then everybody can see it. So get on Gab. Follow me on Gab at AJ Hogue, at A-J-H-O-G-E, right? Follow me there. And what I would like you to do is when you find something good that you like reading, when you find something good you're listening to, when you're enjoying it, even if it's one of my lessons, like you could just say, oh, I'm listening to this lesson. It's my favorite. Put it on Gab, you know, put it on Gab so we can all see it. And, you know, you can send the message to me and I can repost it, retweet it, repost it to everybody else. Soon you can do it in our group. Our Gab group will be back. You can put all this in the group. And maybe, you know, if you want to practice writing a little bit, this is a little bit of writing practice. You could talk about it. You could write about the book or the audio or whatever. You know, describe it. Summarize it. Tell us what it is. Tell us why you like it. Tell us why it's good or why it's useful for other people, you think. In this way, you'll get a little bit of writing practice and you'll share the listening and the reading that you find, that you like, that you enjoy. And we can kind of all give our different suggestions and help each other. So again, get on Gab now. Get a Gab account at gab.com, G-A-B.com, and follow me at A-J Hogue, at A-J-H-O-G-E. That is where our community will be, the Everett's English family. Share your ideas there. All right, I'll see you next time. Lots of love to you. As always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com.